seem to have a pretty, um, you know, pretty generous return policy, provided that the watch is unworn, it is returned in its original um, uh, packet, and obviously I wasn't expecting this, but there is some type of a uh, tamper-proof tag here, which I've never seen um, before, but it makes perfect sense. And if I was uh, in the business of um, selling timepieces, I'd probably do the similar thing. But right now, it appears that um, the watch is uh, in, at least in one piece, which is a good start. <laughs> the leather strap is a Bon Mercier, uh, if you can see that, it is a um, Bon Mercier uh, strap. Leather alligator print or alligator strap, deployment clasp, and... Uh, um, it comes with quite a quite a robust piece of plastic around the the sapphire crystal here, um, so um, I would like to see if I can get this working without removing the plastic, because if I do need if it is not working, I do need to return it. Then of course I want to return it in uh, the same um, condition I received it. But so far, uh, it looks exactly like the piece online. This particular model has the tachometer and the telemeter. Uh, tachometer, of course, is for measuring distance over time, uh, such as uh, if you're, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, um, timing um, bicycle race or car race or whatever. And the telemeter is a little bit unusual. That measures, I believe, uh, um, sound and distance. Um, so if you were timing, or I should say an, a visual uh, display over uh, audio or audible display. So if you're trying to, um, I guess, calculate how far a thunderstorm is away, if you catch the lightning and then you time between the lightning and the thunder with a telemeter, uh, that should give you the distance the storm is away from you. So not sure I ever really use any of those things, uh, but anyway, I think they're kind of neat. I just like the the telemeter is not something you really see. Uh, tachometer, of course, you can find a tachometer on any wristwatch. Uh, you know, all the way down to your your fossil watches, which I have a couple of, and uh, things like that. So, uh, but I really like the clean dial on this. This is the model one zero zero eight two Cape Land. It has the three sub dials. Um, it has the Valjou seven seven five three uh, movement inside, and. Uh, Another thing I learned too is um, some confusion over that. Uh, it's basically a variation of the Value 7750. Uh, I believe the difference is the date set feature, uh, which is an ETA uh, movement. Um, so, uh, but uh, I read online again, uh, pretty standard movement, um, pretty, um, uh, the frequency is pretty standard too. So, anyway. Um, let me see if I can rotate this a few times and see if I can get it moving. Um, being that it's an automatic watch, if I can get the rotor inside to uh, start, then maybe I can do that without removing the plastic. Let me see. Um, not too much movement right now. This hand is moving, if you can see that very slowly there. The subdial on the left hand side there is moving. Um, oh, the large second hand is also moving. This has a standard chronograph movement. They do have some models that are the flyback um, movement. Uh, the flyback simply means that with this particular chronograph here, you have to stop it with the lower uh, um, button, uh, which I can do. Uh, and then, um, let me see if I can do that better without the plastic. And then you stop it again here. And then to reset it, I believe you hit this one, and it resets it to, to 12 o'clock. The flyback, um, quite a nice feature on that, but uh, that's a, a substantial increase in the cost. And quite honestly, it's something I would never use. So it's simply uh, an unnecessary feature. But apparently the flyback uh, movement means that uh, you can hit the lower right hand push button and the large second hand would immediately jump back to uh, 12 o'clock and then re-start uh, timing again. So it's a, instead of having to uh, stop, start, reset, it basically you start and you can jump back. That's why it's called a flyback movement. 
Um, this does not have the flyback movement. Uh, again, wasn't important to me. Uh, I just like this particular watch. This is a pretty fairly substantial weighted watch too. I mean, it's not as quite as heavy probably as a, a Submariner, <clears throat> excuse me, Submariner, but uh, definitely not as heavy as a Datejust, you know, or, or 18 karat, which I've also had, but um, this is pretty significant in weight. It's You can tell it's a, a solid piece. I look forward to getting a closer look to it when I'm done with this particular video and getting all the plastic off of it. But uh, of course, I just want to be very careful that uh, it is working before I remove any of the tags. And I would encourage you out there too, if you are purchasing from Joma Shop, to do that very thing. Um, I did read some comments from people that had um, received timepieces, had issues with them, and uh, and tried to return them, but uh, perhaps they didn't have all of these tags on there. So. Uh, I can see why that would be an issue. It's pretty uh, obvious here that if you remove this, then you're not going to be able to return it. So uh, if one thing I've learned from this is do not remove the tags. Of course, when I um, start wearing this a little later today and I see how accurate it is in timekeeping, then I will definitely uh, remove the tag. But right now, um, I would just like to say that this has been, um, this has turned out to be and it looks exactly like what I thought it would look like. I'm excited about the movement on the back. I think it's very nicely detailed. If you can take a look at that, the rotor has uh, Bon Mercier on there. Um, the Cape Land name is etched on the, I don't think you can quite see that. It's etched on the, the outside of the case back as well. Sapphire crystal scratch resistant glass on the front and back. Um, this again is the Valju 7753 movement. It's an automatic. Um, and uh, this again is the Cape Land 10082 from Joma Shop. Um, what I will do is if uh, everything turns out okay with this uh, timepiece after I wear it for a little while, and I do determine that everything is fine, I'll take the tags off. Um, what I'll do is, is make a follow-up video uh, in a few weeks just to let you know, know um, how the wearability is, how the timekeeping is, and, uh, and basically how my overall experience has been. But again, shipped in, uh, would have shipped in three days, but UPS delayed my shipment um, for two days. So that was not the fault of um, Joma Shop. It was UPS, purely due to bad weather. It arrived on my doorstep Friday at a little after 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And uh, it's now Saturday, and I uh, just wanted to take some time to do an unboxing video because um, basically the the they're not available. I mean, there's a lot of unboxing videos for other pieces and um, what I consider lesser quality pieces, but I just wanted to do this to see firsthand what comes out of the box, to record this for you, give you an idea of my overall experience. Yes, I was skeptical in the beginning, but um, you know, they have an online chat feature, which I also used on their website. I spoke with a, well, didn't speak with, but chatted online with a gentleman. Uh, I forget his name. It was like Zal. Okay. Here's that my video stopped there for a second, so I apologize. Perhaps I reached my limit. Anyway, just in closing, uh, this again is the Bon and Mercier Cape Land 10082. Um, it has the uh, symbol, if you can see right there, probably not on the winder. This is a pull-push winder, it's not a screw-down crown. The quality of the um, strap seems to be extremely nice. Um, and overall, looks like the watch is well protected with the plastic. Um, the little pointer in the box, which I just saw earlier, uh, apparently is for setting the date. This has the date reset on the um, the uh, I guess the top left side of the case you would use that I guess to set the date so I will certainly be uh, doing that once I read the the manual that comes with but uh, again so far this is a, a very nice timepiece you can see the um, the second hand there is, is moving uh, on the left hand subdial uh, can't really think of anything else to tell you other than as I said before I will do a follow-up video uh, in a few weeks, let you know the wearability of this particular piece. Um, but uh, so far, uh, I think it was an exceptional deal. I'm uh, very happy so far. And uh, if anybody is considering purchasing from Joma Shop, um, and you've been doing the research online, uh, the vibe out there is quite negative. Uh, that's what I would say. 
Um, but uh, you know, I took the leap, and I thought, you know what, for the uh, for the price they're offering, um, it's worth the gamble. And so far, um, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy. Again, um, Cape Land one zero zero eight two forty two million. Again, I, I think I reached the memory on my iPhone, so I'm filling this on my iPhone. Um, one thing I didn't do, and I apologize, I didn't place this on my wrist, so here goes. There you go. You'll see it's a comfortable size, uh, not too large. I don't like overly large watches, um, like Panerai. This seems to be suitable for my 8 inch or 7 3 quarter inch. Uh, wrist. Um, so, again, I uh, appreciate you watching. Hopefully, you found this useful, and uh, I will upload these to um, so you can view them and use them while you're researching your next purchase. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, that's it for now. Take care.